Okay. Um, not for sure, but um, I'm thinking Fourier applications. Or something so we're thinking for you Fourier. I know. That's why I'm like rethinking it. Okay. Oh, so you were like in Fourier with your economy at that time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't really have anything in particular. I just have a general interest in that direction. Okay, so today, um, I guess what I was going to do first is just to tell you a little bit more about like linear algebra uh, when there are complex numbers involved, just because you may or may not have seen that, but it's kind of like con convenient anyways to just like have it written down explicitly. It's, an, it's a nice topic. And, um, and then, yeah, after I have done that, uh, explain a little bit more about the tensor product, which is like a very useful construction. And yeah, after we have covered those like things about linear algebra, then I'll kind of tell you like a little bit about quantum mechanics, like in finite dimensions, which is like essentially complex linear algebra more for, for practical purposes. Um, so it, it, there's no difference. And I mean, you know, that's kind of like all the mathematics that you need to know. And then I'll, it's easier to state like the principles in that case, because then you can ignore just a bunch of like stuff about analysis, um, which is what you would need to do if you wanted to do it like a, a, with the Schrodinger, uh, you know, in the general case, uh, which a, a little bit I mentioned last time. So this is actually like a, a cool uh, concept, which is like tensor product. It's one of the, the most important constructions like in linear algebra. So let me just remind you what I was telling you last time, uh, in case you forgot. Uh, okay. So I think I started with um, some examples with vectors. So let's see. So uh, this vector is in R2, and then I'll tell you more like in the, the general formula and how it works. And this vector is uh, in R3, right? So uh, I want to define the tensor product. And okay, when the notation suggests that it's some sort of multiplication. So one way to do that concretely is to literally just like, Take the first entry of u and multiply that by a, like the corresponding entry, so b. So one, one gives you one, one, negative one gives you negative one, one, three gives you three. And then do the same with the second entry of u, right? So um, multiply the second entry of u with every entry of b. So two, one gives you two, two, negative one gives you negative two, and two, three gives you uh, six, okay? Does that make sense? And that naturally gives you an, a vector in R6. Right, so it has like six entries. So in general, like, I mean, you can see pretty straightforwardly that, like, you know, how you could do this, like if the vectors are like more entries, right? So in general, like the way the tensor product is constructed, it would give you, okay, like the, let's see, yeah. If you did the tensor product between Rn with Rn, like you just R to the n times n. Okay. So like the dimensions multiply uh, when you do the tensor product. Now there's like a more interesting way to think about the construction, uh, which is um, the following, like, you know, let me just uh, do these two vectors again. I want to think now of them as matrices. So what, well, this is like a two by one matrix. And um, this is a, a, a three by one matrix, right? Uh, three, two rows, one column, three rows, one column. So if you think about them as matrices, there's no way to do the multiplication of, of these matrices directly because these two numbers need to agree for the multiplication to, to be able to be possible, right? 
So the easiest way to like fix that is the, to transpose one of the two vectors, right? So for example, if you transpose the first vector, let's do like do you transpose B, right? So now you transpose like that's going to be one by two, right? And B is still um so sorry, yes. Okay, so am I transposing this correctly? Like, yeah, or should I? Oh, okay, I could transpose the second one, but usually, like, yeah, if I do that, like, I should transpose. Let me transpose the second factor, let's see. Um, right, because if I transpose the, the second, then that, that's fine. Right? So if I do you be transposed, right, now this, this is fine. Uh, the other one is actually the dot product. I, I mean, if the vectors are the same number of entries. So now it gets two by one, right? And then this is one by three, okay? So now I can multiply these two, right? And like the result will be a two by three matrix, right? So let's see. So you is one, two, and three, and we transpose it one, negative one, three, right? Um, so, I mean, it's kind of weird to do the matrix multiplication here because it, they're so small that it can look confusing, but it's just like, uh, what, like this with this with this with this, like, and then two, negative two, three, oh, sorry, six. Uh, right, so I'm making sense. And then, okay, this is a two by three matrix, right? But if you look at the entries, they're more or less the same as the entries here. Right. So essentially, what I'm doing, what I like is, um, uh, you know, the space. So this is like an element of the matrices of uh, size two by three, right? That is a vector space of dimension six. It's isomorphic with R to the six, right? Like all vector spaces of finite dimension are, are isomorphic. So essentially, like you know, instead of like what I did secretly, it's kind of I secretly did this product, right? I just rewrote it as a column vector. So I'm just using like a convention, or maybe like I take the first row, transpose it, and then the thing. Then the, take the second row transposer to actually regard this as a vector again. Right? But it's not, I mean, it, like, you know, uh, in fact, I think this is like what's called sometimes a Kronecker product, uh, if I'm not mistaken, like, you know, this way to multiply ve vectors. So, in, like, if you want to think about it, like, more like, um, geometrically or like more, uh, like, in a more elegant way. Uh, this tensor product, right? Uh, this tensor product is like as matrices is like U uh, V transpose. Okay. Where again, uh, let's say, well, yeah, this has this was like an n by one matrix, and this was like an n by one matrix. So this. Yeah, it's like n by one times one by n. So this gives you an n by n matrix, uh, which then you identify with a vector in R to the n times n. Then, then this is like gives you a vector in R to the n times n. And this is uh, sometimes it's actually useful to think about this as a matrix. So that's why I'm uh, mentioning this because you'll see in a second uh, why that's like a convenient thing to do. But is that making sense so far? Like, like uh, it's kind of cool, right? Like if you think about it, uh, the important thing like in terms of vector spaces, like, you know, again, like um, there's like a more like general definition, which we don't have need to get into, but um, the point of doing this for vector spaces is that the cool thing is that the dimensions multiply of uh, of the tensor product. So like, you know, the dimension of a tensor product of vector spaces is the product of the dimension, as you can see from this example, from this example. Okay, now, so when you, let's continue, actually I'll do it with R2. So, so,
So like for example, the tensor product, I'm just doing R2 because if we get time to get to the examples uh, with qubits and all that stuff, the vector spaces are dimension two, although complex dimension two, but so like the vectors will have two entries. Um, so, so I'm just saying uh, like what I was telling you is like if you take, uh, you know, the tensor product of two vectors in R2, you'll get something in R4. Okay, so the question is, if you take a, a vector, you know, so if you take a vector, so here's the question. Um, or maybe let's say, let, let's say it is more, um, like in fact, let me, uh, well, let's start with the question and I'll give you like a, so, like, so the question would be, can every vector, W in R4 uh, be written as um, for some And like the question may be misleading because of how I'm writing this. So like maybe it's confusing the way I'm saying it, but like when I write something like this, like what I'm trying to, really what I'm trying to say is that like a vector here can be written as a linear combination of vectors um, in, the, in this form. So what I'm asking like is whether like any vector here can be written as a single, like you know, as a, as a, as a single product, like as a single product of two two vectors, not just like not just like as a linear combination of vectors with of, of this type. Um, or let me be the maybe before answering the question, just to make the more this more clear to to explain what I mean. Like, what is the basis for R two? Is e, like the standard basis, right? So that is a basis for R2. So what if, what happens? So to, like what happens if you do the, the all the tensor products that are possible here? So like what I mean is like let's do E1 tensor E1, E1 tensor E2, right? E2 tensor E1 and E2 tensor E2 and see what we get. Okay, like that I think will kind of clarify a bit better my 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 question. So Okay, so E1 tensor E1 like is one with zero one, so it's like zero one, and then everything is become zero zero. Okay, and then E2 tensor E1. So now you do these with these two gives you zero zero, and then now this you copy from zero. Okay, then E2 tensor E1. Oh, sorry. I, Okay, so which one I, I forgot? Like, oh, uh, silly. So I agree. I, I meant e, one of these had to be E1 tensor E2, right? Like, it kind of didn't. Okay, so E1 tensor E2 would be what? Like, 0, 1. Um, wait. E1 tensor E2. Oh, and then here, sorry. Like, let's see. I did this. It's a mess. So E1 tensor E1 is like, it, like you cut like it's with itself. So it's one, like the one is with one zero. So it gives you here and then zero, zero. So this one was wrong. Now that's fine. And then E1 tensor E2 is the one with these two entries gives you zero, one. And then zero, the zero with these two entries gives you zero, zero. Okay, now this looks better. And then uh, E2 tensor E2, um, 
Yeah, like the zero with the zeros. Okay, now this looks way better. Now, those are the four tensor products. Is that making sense? And you see, like you get the basis, like the, like the standard basis for R4, right? So when I write something like this, what I mean is that any vector here, you know, it's a linear combination of the vectors here. Or like, a, again, like a better way to say this is that if you, like, if you had like a vector space, let's say that the dimension of, of, a, of the vector space U is M. So you have like vectors, like a basis, we did uh, U1, U2, up to U M. And let's say that the dimension of the vector space B is N, and it has like a basis, like, you know, V1, V2, up to Vn, right? What I'm saying is that a basis for the tensor product is like the tensor, like all the ten possible tensor products among, among this. So like a basis for um, U tensor B is formed, uh, is given by, given by, uh, you know, like all the, possible tensor product, ui tensor bj for one, uh, for i between one and m, and j between one and n. Is that, like I think now this is, makes a little bit more sense how I'm writing this. So what I'm saying, just to rephrase my question, what I'm saying is that if you have a vector in R4 because of this tensor product construction, you know can, it can be expressed as a linear combination of tensor products. Like for example, like because like, Every vector in R four is like a combination of the bases, like the standard bases, and like the standard bases are like tensor products. So what I'm asking is that, like, is it the case that you can always write it as a, you know, as a single element, like as a single tensor product, or do you need to like have, uh, you know, multiple uh, choices, right? Uh, so what do you like if you had to make a chat, uh, like you know, is that maybe the first time you're seeing this, but. What would you guess is the answer? Uh, so the answer is no. Uh, this will be actually important. So the answer is no. So for example, so answer to the question, no. So here's an example. Let's take W. And like it's like a very simple vector. So let's take W to be 0, 1, 1, 0. OK? Now my claim is that this is not the tensor product of just two single vectors. You would need more like uh, than that. OK, so first of all, uh, just to show you this, um, notice that this, like, uh, it is like the sum of these two vectors, right? So it is like E1 tensor E2 plus E2 tensor E1, right? So you can, ex it can be expressed as a sum of two tensor products, right? But my claim is that it cannot be expressed as, as a single tensor product. So like two is like kind of the least that you can go. So how can I, I See that, well, let's just do it by contradiction, right? Like, let's say, let's say that you could write it like, like if you could write W as U tensor B, right? Let's call, um, you know, what is U? Like, I don't know what it is, so let's just call it AB, right? And what is B? That's just CD, right? So what is the tensor product? Let's do it here. Like this A with these two entries, so A, C, A, D. B with these two entries is B, C, B, D. Okay. And so like, you know, like this was uh, 0, 1, 1, 0. And then you would need A, C, A, D, B, C, B, D. Okay. And uh, so like from here, I mean, like it's just playing with the system of equation. Let's see what's the easiest way to see that. Okay, like obviously it's better to start with the ones that are equated to zero. So like what does like the first equation say? The first equation say that at least A or C has to be zero, right? Uh, okay, I can't think it's gonna be. 
from here, it's almost immediate, right? Either A or C, right? A equals zero or C equals zero. If A equals zero, then messes up the second. If C equals zero, then messes up the third one, then you're done. Like, you know, it cannot be done. So it's like a simple proof, you know, but it's still kind of like nice to see. So, so this, uh, this like screws up uh, equation two, right? Second equation or second, yeah, second entry. And this one like messes up like third entry, right? Is that, is that making sense? And in fact, there's like a very cool characterization uh, of which vectors can be written as a tensor pro as a like as a single tensor product. Um, it, well, so before I tell you that characterization, is that making sense? Um, Okay, so let me tell you like Okay, so suppose uh okay, so just that in general like in fact let me do it like for um you know like not just R2 with R2. So if you like what I was telling you that Rm tensor Rn is like R n times n, right? Uh, so if you had a vector here, right, we, let's call it W. So if a vector W can be expressed as a tensor product of just like a single combination, right? Oh, that sounds a bit odd. That can be expressed as W equals U tensor B um, for some U in RM and B in RN, right? Uh, what happens in this case? So this is where it comes in handy to have this other characterization that I told you of the tensor product. So this tensor product, if you thought about it as matrices, right? Like it was like, what, what was this? Like U trans, U V transpose, right? That's how I wrote it, like in terms of matrix multiplication, right? So you can think of this vector as a matrix, right? And the, the fact is that this matrix would have rank one. Okay, so it will be a rank one. The core, like the, core, like the associated matrix, the matrix, Like has uh, rank one. Okay. Uh, and the converse is kind of true as well. So conversely, if like a matrix has rank one, um, you know, it can be expressed, um, you know, conversely. If a, if a n by n matrix can, uh, has rank one, uh, has rank one, then it can be written as a tensor product of two vectors, okay? So uh, that explains why this couldn't work because again, if you thought about, this was a vector in R4. If you think about it as a two by two matrix, again, I don't know, like the, the identification of like this as a two by two matrix, like, I mean, it's not canonical, but it would be something like, you know, zero one, one zero. It would be something like that. Or like you could transpose it like, yeah, well, I guess, I guess transposing it doesn't make much of a difference. But this is how I'm thinking about it as a two by two matrix. It clearly has rank two, it's invertible, right? So it could not like, the fact that it wasn't rank one that tells you that it could not have been written as a, as a simple tensor product. Um, 
Okay. And uh, oh, I should because I think I kind of just said that word. So a vector is called simple if it can be written as a tensor product of just two vectors. Okay. So a vector in a tensor product, a vector. If we have a vector in the, in the tensor product of two vector spaces, it's called simple. If um, it can be written as uh, W equals Answer. So, and again, in general, what's true always is that it is a linear combination of things of this sort. So it, that's true. So like it is, you're called simple if you just need one of those summits. So in general, it is a sum of things like this. General W will always be a sum of like things of that form. It's always uh, a sum of stuff. Uh, of things like that. Um, Um, Uh, okay, here, so here, <laughs> here's something very silly, but also fun to mention. Um, and it, like, again, later I'll tell you how this is all related to quantum mechanics, but for now I'm just kind of doing like, um, like the construction in separate of quantum mechanics because like otherwise it becomes a little bit of a, uh, like mumbo jumbo, like in your brains. So if you have a tensor, if you have, if you have a simple tensor, right? <laughs> okay, I I you know it's always easy to do it like this, but it's kind of fun. Okay, that is uh clearly true, right? That I haven't done anything weird there, like. But then, um, let me show you what I'm adding and subtract. Uh, now here I'm assuming that um, you and B are like, like I'm considering now like the, Maybe I should have called this. Now I'm going to talk about the tensor product of a vector space with itself. So let me call this vector v1 and v2 to not make to make it more clear. Looks better like that.
So I'm like, okay, let's see if everyone is with me here. So here I did that. I just split it like by a half. That's fine. And here, like, I added this term. And so to have like the same thing, I just have to subtract it on this other side, right? Uh, so why would you do that? Because then the first thing can be written as one half, you know, of V1 stands for V2, right? Plus, um, you know, oops, there's a one half here that I missed. V1 stands for V2 minus uh, V1. Uh, oops, oh my god, I for like I should have like a factorized statement. Uh, oops, like the first term that we have factorized, then we'll have the sugar cane. Oh. Uh, no, can anyone notice like a uh, funny for, for property of this factor and then a, a one that's kind of interesting on the, on the second one? Like just think about it in terms of like it is like a completely linguistic thing almost like just think about it in terms of like letters right uh what does this have and what does this have like this one is symmetric you know if you swap the v1 with v2 right if you swap with v1 with v2 it looks the same whereas this one is too symmetric right if you swap v1 with v2 you get like a minus sign if you if you want like actually you can think about this as matrix state right so this would be like, you know, one half, you know, V1, like uh, V1, V2 transpose, I think that's how, let me ignore the arrows because I'm getting annoyed with this, I said too much time. Right? So if you transpose this, you get the same thing again, right? And if you, um, you know, If you transpose this, you get a minus sign, which is the same as the statement, you know. So, which every vector, right? Every vector in the tensor product is a linear combination of things like that, right? So every vector in the tensor product is a linear combination of things like this or things like this. And now, so like, you know, this is kind of like the statement, you know, that any matrix, you know, can be written You know that every matrix can be decomposed as a symmetric matrix plus a squeeze symmetric matrix, right? It is like the analog of that. So is that making sense? Can I, can I just point to this? Uh uh, so if you think about the tensor product as a vector space, right? Uh, you know, what that means, it actually gives you, this gives you the decomposition of the vector space as a sum of two, a direct sum of two subspaces, one which is called the symmetric vector space, the, the symmetric tensor product, and the other one which is called the anti-symmetric or skew-symmetric, I, I essentially called the exterior algebra, if you have seen that before. Oh, uh, like what this is called, like this is called, let's call it sim, uh, the tensor V, Direct sum of, well, I'll call it just Q, uh, B and then B, where uh, sim of B tensor B is the subspace of B tensor B spanned by things that look like this. Spanned by linear combinations of those terms. Spanned by linear combinations of 
Uh, in fact, like uh, you can also think about. Sorry, I'll finish writing this, and I'll just remember re return to the dimension stuff. So that is the symmetric tensor product and the skew symmetric tensor product, which is uh, what people call the inferior algebra, and the. Um, that is actually related to integration, but uh, you know when you write like dx dy on a double integral, that's like an exterior product of vectors. But it's like a more, com you know, um, but if you do it that way, like you're going to kind of like in the differential geometry route. But if you do this, like is a this is like the self space. Uh, that's for me. And uh, linear combinations. So, like, uh, you know. This, if the, if the vector space has dimension n, this has dimension n squared. Okay. And um, here I'm assuming that the dimension of this n. And then the symmetric part, it is the same as the space of symmetric matrices. So what's the, the, what's the dimension of the subspace of the symmetric matrices? Is that what, m times m plus one over two or something like that, probably? Uh, I think so. That's correct. Um, we can double check it in the two by two case. In the two by two case, as you know, symmetric matrices, like what do you need? Two by let's see, two by two case. Yeah, like you have like what is a two by two symmetric matrix? Like is like A B C C. So like the dimension has to be three, and in the skew symmetric, it's just like um, a single number, so dimension one. But this is like a dimension n times n minus one over two. Okay. Um, Okay. Uh, again, I'll tell you maybe next time uh, where, you know, I will give you some applications of this, but I, I, it's kind of like useful to see like a construction, like, you know, on its own and there's a linear algebra because it's a fun construction to have. Um, um, but like, what happens, yeah, quantum mechanics is like if a vector leaves in this part is called like a boson and it or corresponds to a particle that's called a boson. And if a vector lives in this part, corresponds to a particle that's called a fermion, essentially. Um, but I'll again tell you about that later. Um, and then the other thing, just before like giving you um, like some applications of this, like so I just mentioned the tensor product. The other thing is um just like the adjoint, which I already mentioned. And for now, I do need to say something about complex numbers. So let's talk about complex vector spaces. So like, yeah, like the model that I'll have for like a complex vector space just to make it easy, it's just like something like C to the N, okay? So what is C to the N, a vector here?
P1, P2, up to N, right? Where, um, so A is N two poles of complex number, right? So oh, let's call this J here. Okay, so, um, you know, like, so this is more or less like the same as R to the 2N, right? So this is kind of like the same as R to the 2N, but it's kind of useful to think about it in this way, because when you have complex vector spaces, right? So when N equals one, that's just like the complex plane, right? Like, two, so like the vector here is like really, Uh, so I'm just going to also for all this in D, but okay. So the the like the only two things that I need to remind you here is that um, there's a complex, like there's an inner product, which is called the skirmishian inner product in this case, right? So like that inner product here, so there's like a inner product in this case. Which the way I'll write it is, uh, let's see. And what do I mean by this? Like W is a W1, W2, up to WN, and Z is Z1, Z2 up to the end. So what this would be, um, if you transpose it, this becomes one by n, this is the n by one, so this makes sense. So it's just like, um, you know, it's w one conjugate C1 plus W2 conjugate C2 plus W n. So like, you know, the inner product on complex vector spaces is essentially the one, the same as the standard dot product in real vector spaces, but you just conjugate uh, one of the two vectors. Uh, so here the cut right where WJ conjugate uh, is X A minus I Y J. Okay, right. So this refers to the conjugate. The reason for doing that is uh, then like it's still true that the dot product or the inner product of a vector with itself. What is an inner product of a vector with itself? That's just like one bar C1 plus C2 bar C2 plus three N bar Cn. And that is like, you know, like a, a, a complex number times its conjugate is equal to like the modulus square. And that's just like the Pythagoras theorem, right? So, um, like then, so you conjugate it so that um, the definition like works well. Um, and then, like, so the notion of a, um, and for that, like, you know, the the adjoint of a matrix. Um, Let's just call it adjoint, yeah. So the adjoint of a matrix is the matrix A star <coughs> So this is going to be the analog of the transpose of a matrix with the property. B 
that um, The point of like the transpose, what was the point of the transpose before that you could just move it around to the other side of the of an inner product? So you kind of like ask the same for or the or in this context, it's just that it, now the inner product conjugates one of the two vectors. So, so again, like when it was a, the standard inner product in our on our end, that was the definition of the transpose. So it is the same definition as a as a transpose, but you know, uh, uh, with the with the pair that now the the this dot product conjugates one vector. So that in practice, uh, you can show. It's not too bad to show the the way you can compute this is by conjugating each entry of the matrix and then transposing. So just to give you an example. If you have like a matrix A, B, C, D, like where now A, B, C, D are complex numbers, then the adjoint is just A bar, B bar, C bar, D bar. So it's like conjugate, it's like the conjugate transpose. Um, okay. And then the matrix is self adjoint, if it, a matrix is self adjoint, if it equals its adjoint. So In a matrix A and so a joint if um, uh, A equals A transpose. Is that what it says? And uh, so let's just work it out for the two by two matrices because it's kind of useful to see it explicitly. Um, so what is what are the two by two self adjoint matrices? Two by two self adjoint matrices. Well, you need uh, you want. A to B equal to its adjoint. Oops. So A is A, B, C, D, and the adjoint is A bar, C bar, B bar, D bar. Okay. So what does that force? Um, you get that A equals A bar, the D equals D bar, and the, uh, I mean, the, the last three questions are the D equals D bar. Right. When is an, a complex number equal to its conjugate? When it's real, right? So the first two questions just say that A, B are real numbers, right? And the, the third equation just means that the matrix is then like, let me put it like this, like, So the R is just to specify that it's purely real, like right, like there's no imaginary part. So and then uh, you know, like what it's up to you. Like you can like we can keep this this one as B, and then this like C is now. <laughs> so that's one way to write it. So and if you want to be more explicit, like you know, yeah, this is like A real, B real plus I B imaginary, right? And then this one is B real minus I B imaginary, and then B real, right? And so how many, like, you can show that, um, like, you know, so how many parameters do you need to specify a, a self-adjoint two by two matrix you need? One, two, three, four, right? You need four like real numbers. Like, so this is like a real vector space of dimension four. So the, the self adjoint two by two matrices, two by two matrices, 
to but to matrices form a real vector space. Vector space of dimension so. Which uh, notice that this one dimension higher that if it were just like symmetric, right? Because the two by two symmetric matrices, when it's all real numbers, then there's no imaginary part here. That's the only difference. So it's just like dimension three, right? So two by two. Form a real space of a vector space of that thing. That makes sense. And then, um, what, um, what else I need to tell you? And from, but there's still like an aspect, again, sorry if I'm probably you have seen it before. There's still like a spectral theorem that says that if you have a self a joint matrix is eigenvalues are real and um, eigenvectors corresponding to di distinct eigenvalues are mutually orthogonal. So like just let me that's kind of like important for me like the quantum mechanics stuff, which I guess I'll just mention next time, which is like our last class. So I'm just kind of giving you like all the linear algebra stuff that's needed to for those statements to make sense. Um so, So the spectral theorem says that if A is self-adjoint, if A equals its adjoint, uh, right, then um, eigenvalues are real. And um, And uh, again, vectors corresponding to distinct eigenvalues are orthogonal with respect to that uh, inner product that I wrote earlier. Again, vectors. Eigenvalues are orthogonal. Um, and in fact, like, you know, you can write like the matrix if you want it as a sum of lambda i times projection. Right, so lambda i is like the, you know, the eigenvalue and p sub i is like the projection matrix that projects onto the subspace associated to that eigenvalue. So lambda i, the eigenvalue. Um, P sub i, P sub lambda i is the orthogonal projection onto the um, subspace. So it's like a projection matrix onto the, uh, what, the eigenspace of this eigenvalue, right? Of the eigenspace. And so, um, and here, uh, projection matrices, I don't know if you remember the definition of a projection matrix, the square of a projection matrix equals itself, right? Uh, P lambda I square equals itself. And usually uh, they're called like orthogonal projections, right? But orthogonality here is with respect to the complex inner product. So it means that they're self-adjoint in the previous sense, right? So. They're at, they equal their own adjoint. And the other thing is that the piece of lambda i add up to like the identity matrix. If you add it, add, add it up the, the, the projection. So the sum of the P lambda i equals the identity matrix. And that's called the resolution of the identity if you have seen that before. Um, so, 
has a as an important property. And then um, once you have like um, you know once you have like this oh this is called the spectral decomposition right so once you have like the spectral decomposition of the matrix you can use the spectral theorem to define functions of the matrix right in the self adjoint case so what is f of a Right, like for example, what's the exponential of a matrix? What's the a squared? What's the cubic root of a matrix? So for the self adjoint case, f of a would just be, um, you know, um, like something like f of lambda i times the corresponding projection matrix. So that's like, uh, and so that it allows you to define, for example, like, you know, e to the a or e cubic root of A, et cetera, et cetera. So you can talk about like matrix functions like um, using the spectral decomposition in the same way as before. Um, and so the other thing that's important here, just to start wrapping this up, because like I'm more or less told you everything that I needed to tell you before I kind of just like mention last time. Like, well, this is all related to quantum mechanics. Is that so? Symmetric matrices are important, and then the other type of important matrices, like linear algebra, are orthogonal matrices, right? Which are called unitary in this context. So, what is a unitary matrix? So, a matrix is unitary. A matrix. U is unitary. Uh, if it preserves the uh, inner product, right? If uh, <laughs> for all uh, vectors. Z. But like you know, what the, you can then from this is very easy to work out the 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 correct the um, you know the correct notion because what is this like this this is the same as moving one of these factors to the other side like using the adjoint so this gives you w u adjoint u z so the only way for this to be true you know, regardless of the vectors B and W is for U adjoint U to be the identity matrix, right? So that requires so this needs uh Uh, U star U equal. Okay, which is the analog of uh, orthogonal matrix, right? If you remember, like an orthogonal matrix was one where like R transpose times R equal the identity, right? So remember, like an orthogonal matrix was is um was where like um. Right, R transpose R equal the identity, um, which here, right, as uh, you remember this, like, if you take the determinant on both sides, right, the determinant on both sides and the, the determinant of the identity is one, right, that's easy. So this gives you, well, determinant of R transpose is the same as the determinant of R, so that gives you the, the determinant of R squared equals one, Oops, right? So the determinant of R has to be equal to plus or minus one, right? The ones with determinant one were like the rotation matrices, uh, basically. Um, so you get like a rotation matrix, essentially. And then, uh, so we can do kind of like the same here, right? So you take determinant on both sides, 
you get one, right? What do you, like, I mean, again, maybe you already saw this, but what the determinant of the, uh, what do you think is the determinant of the use adjoint? Almost that, right? Because there's like, U adjoint is the transpose conjugate, right? So, like, so it's, okay, let's work it out. Definitely it will be multiplicative, like that's like a property of the determinant that continues to work. Right, that's fine. Uh, so, but this is a determinant of u that u conjugate transpose, right? That so the transpose pair does go away because the determinant of a matrix equals the determinant of the transpose. So you just get a determinant of u bar, right? Times the determinant of u equals one. But like this is conjugating every single entry of the matrix. So the determinant should just be the conjugate of the original one, if you think about it, right? Like and we can do it like for example, like if you like let's say you have been like a b c d, right? What if u bar is a bar, b bar, c bar, d bar, right? So from here it's kind of easy to say that the determinant of u bar should be bar of the determinant of u. So that making sense? Uh, Is that okay? Is that possible here? And so that means that this is a the determinant now is a complex number because we're working with complex entries. So that means that it is a number. To, it's a number whose this is like a number whose with the property that it, that number times its conjugate equals one. So that's a number on the unit circle, right? So this is the analog of being plus or minus one. It's like a, a pure phase, right? So the, so determinant of u is like of the form e to the i theta for some theta. And then um, by analogy, you could also focus on the matrices, uh, unitary matrices with determinant one, and then that's called the special unitary matrices, uh, um, which uh, play an important role, like quantum mechanics, but um, so for example, like you call UN, maybe I should write it. UN is like the N by N unitary matrix. Unitary matrices and S U N are called the N by N unitary matrices with determinant one. S U N with the N by N uh, unitary matrices with determinant one. Okay. Um, what is kind of fun about each of these is that they form a group. Again, for if you have seen it, meaning that if you take two unitary matrices and you multiply them, they're still unitary, the identity is unitary, and the inverse is unitary. So, like, okay, each of these sets is a group, each of these form a group. Uh, that's kind of nice. And uh, what's also very cool is that if you have, um, I don't think I, I gave a special name to this, uh, but I don't think there's a, a special name for this. But if you have a, a self-adjoint matrix, so here's, I'm almost done. Uh, this is almost like the last um, pack that we need. So other another pack is that, um, if, if a permission, right, or self adjoint, we kind of did this a long time ago before, but I don't, I don't know if you remember this, um, this property. Then my claim is that um, you can, if you complex exponentiate it, you get a unitary matrix for any number, real number t. Then is um then is unitary for any real number. Okay. Why? I mean, it's okay. You should just to check that something is unitary. Um, you know, you have to conjugate it. So, what is u dagger? 
Oh, sorry, you had your thumbs too. I mean, it's kind of conjugating e to the i t a. So the idea is like if you think in terms of the spectral theorem, if you are self-adjoint, all your eigenvalues are real. So the conjugation really only conjugates the i part. So it becomes like e to the minus e t a, like because like this matrix is kind of like real in a sense because all these like values are real. So it's just like minus like doing this, and like you know for like that it does most like because it's with a and minus a and those commute then this is just you can just add up the exponents literally so you get e to the c, the zero matrix which is the identity. Okay, and if you wanted to see. Uh, when is this like a special unitary matrix, right? Let's like that's a part that I said like we had discussed before. When is um, determinant of u equal to um, to one? Well, you need the determinant of e to the i t a equal to one, right? And I don't know if anyone remembers what was the determinant of an exponential. I said that a long time ago when we talked about symplectic matrices, like. What? There was a clever formula for the determinant of an exponential. Sure yeah, it's like the, it was the exponential of the trace, perfect. So it's e to the trace of i p a. So you need this one. And so the trace is linear, it's still like, so you can take out the. And then, so for this to work, you need the trace to be zero. You need the matrix, the self adjoint matrix to be zero. Basically, for this to work regardless of the value of t, that's what I'm trying to say. Obviously, if you choose like a stupid value of t, then this works, but like so, you need the trace to be zero. So, a self adjoint trace as matrix gives you a unitary, a special unitary matrix. That's also that's also useful. Um, you know, if you ever study group theory, like and the rotation matrices and all that stuff, that's like a very cool uh, property. So, so if a equals is adjoint and trace of a is zero. Then uh, e to the i t a is uh, belongs to the special unitary group for any t. Okay. Uh, and in fact, what you can do, uh, not that we will need it, but you every basically right everything like for example, if you look at something like but just to finish this up. If you look at the two by two exponential matrices, uh, unitary matrices, they can be written as exponentials of some like some self-adjoint matrices, which are given in terms of like these famous Pauli matrices, which you may have heard about before. And that's related to something called spin. But I may say a bit about that next time. But so next time, okay. So this was kind of like a crash course on linear algebra. Next time I kind of will put tell you how this is all related to like the quantum mechanics part. And that's like, I feel like a good way to wrap up the, 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 the course. Okay, so, but I thought it was useful to just have this separate from everything else. So like to not like make it like a bit confusing, like to just go back and forth between the two topics. So like next time I'll just show you how this is all like related. Okay, so let's listen here. <laughs>